Okay, so tonight for homework, what I want you to do is a little bit of review about some things that we already know about chemical equations, and then we're going to extend a little bit by starting to look at how we actually go about balancing chemical equations. The first thing that's helpful, though, is to do a little bit of review. If you look at the example that's on the screen, we've got an example of a symbolic representation of a chemical reaction that you've probably seen before, where we have potassium iodide reacting with lead to nitrate to form two products, potassium nitrate and lead to iodide. Notice that I've underlined reactants in blue, and then we've got our products in red. At this point, that should all be review, and nothing should really be horribly exciting about what I'm telling you. But what we're going to focus on now is how we balance chemical equations. So that's where it might become a little bit new, because if you think about it, balancing equations is essential because we have to account for the number of atoms that we start with and the number that we finish with in the compounds that those atoms are in. So to balance those equations, we're going to fundamentally change actually very little. Um, but the things that we do change, you need to make sure that you remember. And the things that we can't change, you also need to remember that as well. So hopefully through, through the end of this, in the next couple days, you should feel comfortable looking at an equation like this and balancing it. And in the case of this example, we would balance this equation. Um, oh, I made a mistake there. There should be a 2. We balance this equation by adding coefficients. And I'll just show the coefficients in green. So for example here, there would have to be a 2 here, and a 2 here. And then the equation becomes balanced. So as we go through this, I'll explain what that means. Some key ideas before we move on. When you balance equations, you may change coefficients you may not change subscripts. So let's go back and make sure we know what a coefficient is and what a subscript is. Coefficients are going to be numbers that we place in front of equations. So we can change these just like you could change your mind in the dining hall and grab two slices of bread instead of one. That number just refers to how many of that particular formula unit you have. In this case that two designates that we have two potassium iodide formula units. Since there is no number in front of lead to iodide, the assumption is that, or, or lead to nitrate, the assumption is that there's only one. There's a coefficient of two in front of potassium nitrate. That means we have two formula units of potassium nitrate. And we also notice there's no coefficient in front of lead to iodide, so that means we assume there's only one formula unit of lead to iodide. So that's an example of coefficients. And the other component that we need to think about are subscripts, and there's several examples of subscripts here. I'm just going to point out one. That lower number two, that's what we call a subscript. And the reason why the subscript in this case is a two is because lead has a charge of plus two. Nitrate, that polyatomic ion in parentheses right here, has a charge overall of minus one. Since lead is plus two, and nitrates a minus one, we need two of the nitrate ions to balance the charge of the single lead two plus ion. Subscripts are not things we can change. Coefficients are things that we can change. So let's go through an example together. So here we have an example where calcium metal reacts with water to produce calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. You notice I haven't balanced this equation yet. I've only written the proper chemical formulas. Now we should feel comfortable to writing these chemical formulas. What I'm going to start doing, and what you can do until you get the hang of things, is just start by listing the elements that are on, involved in the reaction. So we just have carbon, or sorry, calcium, hydrogen, and oxygen. And I've got them on the reactant side, and I've got them on the product side. So I'm just going to put a dividing line between them to see how many there are on each side and identify where there's an imbalance. So I look at calcium on the reactant side, and I notice there's only one. I go to the product side, and I see there's also one that's in calcium hydroxide. Hydrogen, there are two on the reactant side. On the product side, there are two plus two, four. Because remember that subscript of two outside of calcium hydroxide applies to everything inside. 
So that's one area where it's not balanced. I'm going to continue on though and make sure that I look at everything first before I make any changes. So oxygen, there's one on the reactant side and there are two on the product side. Now I need to remember my rules at this point. The rules are I can change coefficients, I can't change subscripts. So if these are the correct formulas, I can only put numbers in front. So calcium, there's no real need to change anything because there's one on the reactant side, one on the product side. For hydrogen, I need two more on the reactant side. So I have to think about a number that when multiplied by two would give me the number that I want. So I'm going to add a coefficient, in this case, of two. That two applies to everything in that particular molecule. So now hydrogen are no longer two, but two times two, which is four, and oxygen are, is now two. So if you look through this equation, we can look at our little chart we've made and see that now everything is balanced. One calcium on both sides, four hydrogen atoms within those compounds and molecules, and two oxygen atoms within those compounds and molecules. So that's our example. So since a lot of you have told me you've already balanced equations before, I want you to dive right in and try a couple samples. These three samples are the three that I want you to do in your class notes. I want you to give yourself some space in your notes and work through a process similar to what you saw me do in this worked example. So try these three first. You can feel free to pause this video and do each of those at your own pace. Once you're done with these three, there's one final problem. And this is the final problem. This problem will require you to actually determine the correct chemical formulas. Okay? So first go through and write the formulas, a lot like what you had to do for AC3 preparing, and then balance the chemical equation. Good luck, and make sure that you comment on Schoology if you're having any trouble with this assignment.